and now you suddenly feel like you're in a real plane and that is incredible this is a better default model than we've ever have ever seen Naughty the time has finally come using mobile flight simulation yes running a flight simulator on your phone has actually reached a professional limit because aerofly has released their brand new simulator aerofly fs global you know for the past five years i've been reviewing the aerofly versions that the developers of ipax come up with every year you know aerofly fs 2020 fs 2021 fs 22 23 and now 24 which is the real deal the global deal you know aerofly has always been this great simulator with good graphics but the problem was that you couldn't fly worldwide you were restricted to only a few regions you know the microsoft flight simulator for example or x-plane has the whole globe added and aerofly never has had that and so it's clearly lacking but everybody times have changed aerofly fs global is out now you can buy it for like three bucks here on the store let me tell you the trailer looks absolutely amazing i've just downloaded it let's take a close look and so everybody here it is aerofly fs flight simulator where you can already see on the left corner here global scenery which has to be bought in a subscription-based service of course like most modern flight simulators you can't just download the whole world onto your phone so you have to stream your data like in microsoft flight simulator this is a service that costs i think like what is it like 99 cents a month which is cheaper than most of the competitors it's really nice this is uh great so buddy, let's take a bit of a look here we of course got all the good old aircraft. We have we can buy some more in the aircraft bundle, 747, whatever it is. There's a lot we can buy. And let me tell you a lot. And all these aircraft are very nicely done. But I really want to take a look at the new release this year of the 737-900 next generation. Where we have a great bunch of airlines. KLM, for example. Korea, whatever you want. Oh. What should be more interesting, though, is choosing your starting location. And here we have truly the whole globe. So let me try to spawn in so Mm -hmm. Let's go for Courchevel. Yes, we have that airport, of course. We can see. Uh, let's maybe spawn onto the ground. Perfect. In the conditions tab, we can set the time, oh, the wind, turbulence, whatever it is, and also clouds. The clouds look great, too. Let me get some good density going. And let's spawn in. I'm actually genuinely excited. Initializing. Now it's downloading the scenery to the phone. Which, actually, you know what? This actually worked quite well. There we go. And welcome to Courchevel. Jeez, this, this looks like... This looks... This is literally Microsoft Flight Simulator quality with the actual slope of the runway of Courchevel added in. And my phone is not even blowing up too much. Is it? Right, I'm using the iPhone 14 Pro, which isn't even the newest phone. Uh, That's something that po probably people will be concerned about. And that is the compatibility. Let's maybe see if that plane blows up in any part of the video. So everybody, here we are on border 737 Next Generation, which is already turned on. But I don't want that. There you go. I'm just turning it off now. And we can hear the nice sound. The sound design is quite good. Because I just really want to show you how amazing the 737 is. All right. So things are looking good here. We're on board our site. Spice Jet <laughs> 737 NG. The texturing is quite nice. All right. And something we have here is a new button, which does the pushback like that. That's quite cool. There you go. We can go into the helm of the pushback truck. And there we can actually control it. We can actually control the pushback truck. Name me one mobile flight simulator that is able to do that. We can crash the plane without even steering it ourselves. That is amazing. Maybe we'll get rid of that. That is this is really cool. This is better than Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right. Let's get into the cockpit once again, where we once again can, you know, just admire. So, turn on the APU right here. This is the start switch for the APU. We're going to hold it down. And, and well, there we go. The EGT is coming up. APU is getting hot, which means it's turning on. This is great. So, that is good. We can turn on the generator. There we go. That's good. Let's turn on. There we go. There we go. Perfect. This plane is running on itself now. But, but as you can see, the primary flight display and also the MFD are not working. That is because we have to actually align them. Yes. We have to use the inertial reference system switches we're now aligning and let me say this is more advanced than microsoft flight simulator and there we go plane's aligning itself let's get to the fmc there we go where we can perform the initialization great and now you suddenly feel like you're in a real plane and that is incredible this is a better default model than we've 
ever have ever seen, really. So let's get those engines started. Let us turn on the APU bleed. Every single switch works. Perfect. And that also turned on the engines. And we can hear that beautifully. I've, I'm wearing headphones. And this sounds better than Microsoft Flight. I'm playing this on my iPhone. Let me just mention that. This is truly incredible. There you go. We can see also the primary flight display is now finally lined. Things are looking good. Let's get some of that fuel going. There we go. That turns on the engines finally. Unless there's an engine fail. This is truly incredible. I'm just amazed. All right, now it's time to put this plane to the flight test. There you go. Full power into the engines here. Looking great. Let's get into the cockpit like uh, that. Perfect. And we can see the airspeed. We can monitor the live instruments. We have the rudder down there. Uh, I didn't really mention them. I didn't I didn't really care to set the flaps or anything, but we're good. There we go. We're flying. Stall horn. Landing gears up. The flaps up too. Let's get outside. And there it goes. Spike Shed is departing out of Courchevel. Now, one limitation we have for the mobile is that we don't have trees. We only have the 3D buildings, but geez, I, I probably this plane would genuinely blow up if they were to add trees. And this is just incredible. The beautiful new 737-900, also with this basic Courchevel scenery, beats Microsoft Flight Simulator in no time. But I'm just amazed. But you know, the European Alps, they're such a common region. Of course, we shall try some other spots around the world. And if you go for Africa, I guess things would look quite scarce. Of course, you know, some airports are added in, like Kindu. I don't know what that place is. What does such a, a unfamous place look like? We spawned to another aircraft that is maybe free. Which is hard to find. Let me tell you, this is a very uh, upgradable simulator. All right, start. Initializing. See, how long is this taking to download? All right, there we go. And aha. Now you see what it looks like when you fly into an area that's a little bit less explored. I mean, we do have 3D buildings here, but the scenery is incredibly poor. And we're crashing our Q400. Please down. Uh, come on, get into the cockpit view. Q400, also an amazing airplane. Very nicely done here by the team. Come on, let's get down. Just land. That was the hardest landing I've ever seen today. We're nicely braking. Things are looking quite nice. Perfect. Of course, we can replay the entire flight as well. Check this beautiful replay mode out. Get one of the views here. Great. All right, so this is... A, I don't even remember the place we're in. But it is true. Not every place looks amazing in the simulator. There we go. Mm. Wow, that was an incredible landing. Thank you very much. Now, I think this would greatly, you know, impact the way that people plan their routes. No one would be flying to random places that aren't very known. But, you know, it's, it's good enough for flying over the places, right? So, for example, if you're flying transatlantic, things are just fine. If you really dare to, you can fly, you know, from New York, which looks quite nice. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's downloading right now. Ah, uh -huh. there we go. I mean, let's check this out. We've, we've got the One World Trade Center. Isn't that beautiful? Good looking scenery. You could perhaps fly, you know, to London. London looks great too, I, get, I reckon. London City, let's maybe try to land there with another airplane. Um, mm, There isn't much available without charge. Let me tell you, this is not the super free simulator, but I mean, you know, you don't end up paying 60 bucks like in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Come on, say A320 will be enough. All right, there we go. Welcome to London Town, which uh, only is flat. There's no 3D buildings here, huh? Oh, God. So my biggest concern, as always, is that I can't really fly planes very well with my hand, like on a phone, like tilting. I rather prefer a joystick, but um, I guess that's something that, you know, Aerofly doesn't really... 50, 30. Retard, retard. All uh, right, there you go. That's been a landing. That's been particularly bad. But you know, that's uh, something that uh, isn't really the fault of Aeroflies. But there we go. We can once again replay that beautiful flight. This out an outside view. Amazing. The A320 is also very, very nice looking. I mean, check this out. You wouldn't say that this is a mobile. Perfect. But everybody, a truly sad moment is this. When I realized, oh yes, next to St. Martin. The island of St. Bartholomew, with its beautiful airport, is missing next to also Saba Island. The shortest runway in the world is missing. You can barely tell it here. A very sad moment if we fly above it. I think that's going to look very strange. Oh, poor St. Barth's. Your runway is completely gone. But, you know, we do have 3D buildings imitated here somehow. It doesn't look bad. If we were flying at an altitude of like 50 million thousand feet, like that, you can... 
Like, this looks clearly good from above, like very high above. Let me see uh, what, what LAX looks like. Can't be bad. Aha, it's nighttime now here. This is what the night looks like here in the Aeroflight Simulator, and we're crashing into one of the um, NPC traffic. Yes, real life traffic has been added in as well. This is what that what night look. I want. I don't want to. I want to have it at night. Come on. There we go. Put that UTC to like this. Aha. Well, good morning to Los Angeles. We can see the beautiful airport added in. We could theoretically now make a 10 hour flight across the ocean to um. Oh, Asia land. Let me check out this Japanese island of Naha. Aha. Uh -huh. Welcome uh, to this island. We can perhaps take off here. Check out the beautiful cockpit with, of course, the instruments working. Oh, hold on. Let me see how the APU's doing. Yeah. Uh, that's not the APU page. This one. Oh, APU's off. Oh, that makes sense because our engines are on and we're taking off. See this? We're taking off beautifully from our little island. Let's put the landing gear up like that. That. Yeah, that's been good. And we're truly taking off nicely from this 3D airport. I've never even heard of this island. And the fact that it still looks amazing still is just incredible. That's pretty much all I can say about the new Aerofly Global. I think it's a, it's just a game changer. A definite recommend for me. Yes, I know I've, all of these planes are cost and I haven't really reviewed them in today's video. That's because they are old. They were already included in other um, Aerofly simulator editions. It makes sense for them to ask for money once again because somehow you gotta fund this. It's gotta be incredibly expensive to develop, but this is great. And the 737-900 is quite enough for me. Check this out. I now kind of feel like flying on drugs. One thing I do want to check out is how does the simulator behave when it's offline like that? There you go. We've got no more connection to real life. We try to still spawn into somewhere. Maybe Heraklion Airport. Yeah, you can see the scenery is not loading in. Start. And it looks like trash. Wow. That's, uh, this is not what the island of Crete looks like. Although, according to Aerofly, we could probably go to some location we've already been to, Courchevel. And if it's loaded into the cache, it should still work. Yes, as Courchevel is already downloaded, pre-downloaded, we can use it. And it looks very much amazing. I'm a big fan. So everybody, thank you guys so, so much for watching today's video. What a definite recommend. Oh, that's not looking healthy. Mr. Captain, you're not even wearing your stripes. Ah, uh, you might want to fix that posture. Oh, and we've crashed. This is great. Ah, uh, we're on line there. Oh, check this out. They even made the tunnel. So what do you think, you guys, so much for watching today's video? And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you very much to my highly supporting members like Jamie Ashton, Mike C, James Duram, Ragings, Met RLG, Matt Van Z, Moritz, Bellhausen, Knott's Enthusiast, Shadow, New the York, Ryland Williams, Kelly Chaos, John O'Brien, and I'm addicted to Airbus A380s. Thank you.